Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'll show you several projects using tumbling tower blocks. So let's get started. So first I'm going to make an oriental lantern. First I'm making a square part out of blocks. Here I'm using wood glue. I'm making two square parts like so. Then I'm assembling an L-shaped part out of four blocks. Three blocks go in a row and then one more block goes across. These L parts will be the sides of the lantern, so try to choose blocks with a wooden part that is more or less the same so that the joints don't stand out too much. You want to make four parts like this. To make the parts even it's better to sand them after drying as the blocks are not identical. Then I'm making a small square part out of three blocks, gluing them by long sides. You will need two square parts like this. Let the parts dry overnight and now let's assemble all of this together. I'm positioning the L-shaped parts like this, making a kind of a cross with a small square gap in the middle. Then I'm attaching the small square parts so that its corners rest on the L-shaped parts. And then I'm attaching the larger square part on top. This is the lantern body. To make the top I'm placing four blocks in a kind of a cross with some space in the middle and attaching the large square part to it. In order to position the blocks evenly I'm placing the lantern body upside down over the top base and checking that all the cross blocks are exactly under the body side parts and also have the same length. I'm using an extra block to check this. Then I'm making another cross out of four blocks with a small square in the center and attaching the small square part over them. And after both top parts are dry, I'm attaching the smaller part over the top of the larger one. Then I'll make stoppers for the lid. I'm turning the lid upside down and placing the lantern body over it upside down as well. And I'm attaching cross blocks to the top, leaving a small gap so that the top can be removed easily. These blocks will not let the top fall if it moves a little. All that is left is to put a glass jar inside and we're good to go. This lantern is very sleek and minimalistic, so I didn't want to paint or stain it and I left it as it is for now. I just like how bare wood looks here. I may decide to repaint it with time though, I think it will look gorgeous in black. It looks especially nice with pebbles in the jar, this kind of emphasizes that organic look. For the second project, first I'm connecting the blocks in pairs, making bars. I'll need as many as 32 parts like this. Then I'll use photo frames. I have here untreated frames and you want to remove glass and glass holders from them. Then I'm attaching the bore parts into the two of the frames. I'm lucky to have them fit right into the space for the glass. To assemble the lantern body I'm connecting the frames together using masking tape so that they do not fall apart. After that I'm attaching two more bar parts and I'm placing the edges onto the edges of first two bars, making a square base. I let the base dry so as not to be afraid to move it around and then I'm continuing attaching the bars like shown before until I fill the frames up to the top. Thank you. 
By the way, here you can also use a wooden sled and cut it to fit the frames and not use tumbling blocks at all. While the sides are getting dry, I'll make the bottom. I'm using 12 blocks for this and making a square part out of them. And I'm making a square pattern here, like on a garden wooden flooring. I'm adding the legs to the finished bottom. These are two long bars. And finally, I'm attaching the lantern sides to the bottom. Then I'll make the top. This time I'm going to use papier mache technique since the shape will be a little bit curved. I'm cutting four parts out of corrugated cardboard. You want to place them so that the corrugation runs parallel to the bottom side of the part. I'm shaping the finished part with a stick, you want to make them slightly curved. And I'm assembling the parts using masking tape. I'm also adding a strip of cardboard to the top as a handle. Then I'm covering the top with pieces of newspaper soaked in white glue. I've covered the top both inside and outside with two or three layers of newspapers and after drying I've covered it with another layer of white glue. By the way, if you've got a fruit dryer, such things dry superbly in it. Just about 10 minutes and you are done. I'm also covering the finished lid with a thin layer of putty to even out the surface. You can use texture paste here as well or make your own out of white glue, baking soda and acrylic paint. I've posted a video with this recipe a couple of days earlier. I've decided to make a white frame on the top to make it look more interesting. Here I've had to saw, but as you can see I've managed with a small jigsaw. I'm shortening two blocks by a third and after that I'm assembling a square frame out of eight normal and two short blocks. I let the frame dry and attaching to the finished top. To reinforce this structure, after drying I'm applying hot glue inside, filling the gap between the frame and the top with glue. Then I'll paint the thing. I'm staining the base of the lantern, here I'm using Verithan Briar Smoke Stain, love its grayish brown shade. This is an oil-based stain, I'm applying it with a brush and then wiping off the excess with a cloth. By the way, I strongly advise you not to do like I did. The finished body has a lot of hard to reach corners that are difficult to get to, so if you decide to make this, stain all the bars and frames in advance before gluing together. This will save you a lot of time. I'm staining the lantern body both inside and outside. I'm also staining the square frame on the top and then I'm painting the top itself dark grey. After the paint dries well, I'm dry brushing the top with white to highlight the edges a bit and make the color more interesting. And finally, I'm sealing the lantern with a matte varnish. I 
All that is left is to attach the small hinges for the top and you are done. This is another lantern in my collection. I think I have already made five or six different DIY lanterns. I really like its unusual base, looking like shutters on the windows. I was inspired by pottery barn lanterns when making this one. Of course, as with most wooden lanterns, you cannot use real candles inside, but it looks great with an electric candle or a fairy lights inside. Please let me know what you think of today's project down below. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!